Support for Jacked Ramsey is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With this exclusive offer for you, 20% off, free worldwide shipping with a code JACKED. 20 at manscaped.com again that's jacked 20 at manscaped.com and why go with manscaped well manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology i now feel confident shaving my boys so remember, get 20% off and free shipping with a code JACKED20, that's J-A-C-K-E-D-2-0, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code JACKED20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Jacked Ramsey's podcast. I am your host, Danny Morang. We are part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I am flying solo dolo tonight because, well, Brandon Sprague is currently flying. Uh, he is on his way back from Hawaii. Uh, if you're listening to this Sunday night, he's just landing. If he's, you know, Monday morning, I think he might be back in the studio. Uh, either way, he's had some nice R&R, and uh, we're just going to let him take this one off because he's, uh, well, I'm a nice guy. That's not true, but this time we are. Uh, it is a mailbag pod, Sunday night, Monday morning. That's how this one goes. We have a ton of questions. Almost all of them are about Larry Nance Jr., which, yeah, it makes sense. August, new player acquisition. Yeah, that tracks. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, there will be another video out uh, shortly after this one focusing on Larry Nance Jr., who, what, when, where, why. Uh, this podcast, while it's a Q&A mailbag it's going to serve as kind of a Larry Nance Jr. Uh, 101. Uh, the advanced course will come later as we'll focus on some playmaking elements, finishing elements, defensive elements, and how all that's going to fit together and where it'll come together in Portland. This will be more the 30,000-foot view um, to kind of, you know, get, again, get you your introduction. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Our first question here from All Good at Julio Can 2. How does Nance compare to a player like Aaron Gordon? Gordon was a guy a lot of people were hoping for last season, me. Uh, and probably would have been jubilant about getting. I feel like Nance fills a similar role need for the Blazers without all the fanfare. Uh, I think the last part of that, as far as the fanfare, it's probably about the same. If 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 you'd swap the two, like Larry Nance Jr. was traded to the Nuggets in season and Aaron Gordon out of season, I think it probably would have been pretty close to the same. Uh, as far as fanfare, just because out of season, in season, you know, you get to see the immediate ramifications. This was like, ah, and it kind of falls off a little bit. That's how it goes. But I think there's a pretty decent comparison there. Uh, Gordon, a little bit bigger, a little bit more athletic. Uh, I would say Nance is the more better feel, I think, or has a better feel for the game. I think being Larry Nance Jr., uh, the senior in this case, being a former NBA player, I think that plays a part in who Larry Nance Jr. is and how he plays the game. One of the things that has just been evident in watching tape after tape after tape with, with him is his style, his... It's not like this box score thing. It just does all of the little things that he's... He's just a basketball player. He gets it. Uh... I'm I'm actually genuinely interested to see how it plays out, not necessarily with the the, the skill sets, but how he fits. He he clearly got frustrated at times when uh, the young guys like Sexton and Garland uh, made mistakes. Uh, Javale McGee and Aaron Drummond or Aaron, Andre Drummond on the other side, um, and I think that's part of what motivated him, motivated him to want to come to Portland. Not the defensive mistakes because he's in for some of those. There's no doubt about that. But the winning. And I think the Blazers are, uh, offer him that opportunity, but he's going to be faced with some of those same mistakes, but it's going to be from veteran players. So how that dynamic plays out is going to be really interesting. But back to the question, as far as how does he compare to Aaron Gordon? I think Nance Jr. has got a better natural feel for the game, a better playmaker. Gordon is a better guy to feature further up in the lineup, if that makes sense. Uh Gordon, I, I think, can do... I think Gordon's skill sets, the skills that he has, are higher up the pecking order than 
uh, Nance's in the sense of what you can get out of him, where Nance, he just does a lot of things pretty damn well. Um, but between the two, Nance, I would say, obviously a little bit less athletic, again, but better feel. Gordon, the more athletic, uh, a little bit more expensive, obviously younger. Uh, that that plays a part in this as well. But also, um, his he's the scoring elements of, of Aaron Gordon's game, uh, wanting in, in the ability to get downhill and create off the bounce a little bit more effectively. Um, I think those are valued a little bit higher uh, in that realm and, and the ability or the thought that he can be a bit more effective as a defender um, with better hip fluidity, better foot speed, that kind of thing. It's, I, I think it's a bit of a dealer's choice in this regard. But if you're, if all things being equal, I think I would take Gordon over uh, Nance. But right now, Nance's playmaking probably elevates him into as far as what who would better fit the role the Blazers have available right now. Nance, I I, I think that's pretty easy to go with. Uh, but as far as a comparison, pretty good offensively. I look at a Boris Diaw. That's who I look at Larry Nance Jr. as. He has a certain swagger, a je ne sais quoi, since uh, Boris is French, um, as far as how he plays the game, how everything just kind of seems to flow and come naturally. And I I really enjoy it. I, I do. I really enjoy how he plays the game, and I'm really looking forward to how he's going to impact the Blazers this year. Uh, this from Embiid, at Good Dawson it. Uh, Nance is a solid ro- play, rotation player for sure. Our fans, at least on Twitter, setting realistic expectation for his impact. Hell no. Wah, 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 wah. No. <laughs> but that's the offseason. That's that's what happens. Um, I've seen some people say that the Blazers are set now. The rotation is balanced. The roster is balanced. And it's like, are, are, did CJ get traded? Because if that hasn't happened, that the team's not balanced. That's... That's the hang-up. Like, uh, but it is a good move. It's a solid business decision. On, on the, the immediate rapid reaction, I kept calling it, it's a solid business decision. They took a guy in Derek Jones Jr. who wasn't getting played, whose skill set, while valuable, didn't have as much value with the Blazers, and they flopped it for a skill set that's more meaningful and more impactful. That's, that's a good move in a vacuum. Um, as far as expectations, the way that I phrase it is he is not a ceiling raiser. He is a floor raiser. Ceiling Razors are all-star, near-all-star all star caliber guys. Starters. Or the most impactful of sixth men. Andrew Ginobili. Like, th- that's, yeah, that's a guy. But he gives them more, Larry Nance Jr., gives them more flexibility. He gives them uh, more more ability to, to absorb um, not only injuries to the bigs, but to absorb more counters from opponents. Uh, Nance Jr. can legitimately play small ball center. This this whole idea of Nance can be the starting three. We're going to do this uh, seemingly every year, um, every time the Blazers get a big-bodied wing who's a 4-5 and say they can play a three, or they're going to get a two and say he should play three. <laughs> I, I don't know what the fascination is with, with, with Portland fans and the Portland front office and not getting actual threes, but this no. You might see a, a, a lineup or a certain number of possessions with Nance or Covington at a three. That is not the norm. Covington and Nance are both fours. I I am very much looking forward to Nance and Covington spending time together on the floor at the four or five. That, I think, is something that the Blazers can effectively optimize pretty regularly. I would not be surprised to see Nance in closing lineups as a small ball five. I genuinely would not. Um, it's... How that plays out with Yusuf Nurkic, that's going to be a different story. But realistic expectations for his impact. He is going to raise their floor. They He is going to help them win some games by booing that second unit, by greasing the offense, by not having Dame and CJ and, and Nurk take on so much creation burden. He is going to take some of that away. And in that essence, it is going to make it easier for others regularly. And that's a good thing. This from Joel, just Joel, Mr. Yolius, what kind of plays were all bench play now that we have a bit more height? I'm not sure exactly what you're going here for, Joel. What kind of plays will our bench play? I'm assuming what type of actions they may or may not run now that they're a little bit bigger. 
I would expect, at least that's how I'm going to answer this, I would expect that the Blazers are going to be um, very similar to what they were under Terry Stotts offensively. They're going to make changes. There's no doubt about that. But you don't come in and go, hey, you know what? I want to make wholesale changes to the second most efficient offense in the NBA, an offense that for the last nine years has been very good. Damian Lillard is an offense unto himself. You don't take the ball out of his hands. You don't tell the team to take less threes. Now, Larry Nance Jr. will, again, help grease that ball movement. I think that is a good thing. He is probably their best interior passer. That is one of the things that I've seen regularly here. Him and Nurk are guys who will take chances with the ball. And and, uh, one-handed, on the move. And that's the other thing. Nance is a better passer on the move than Nurk is right now. Uh, I think that's Nurk's one real shortcoming as, as a creator. He's just not great on the move, which is just pretty normal for a seven foot, three hundred pound guy. It's th- not real graceful. Uh, Nance is big. He's strong. Uh, huge butt. Uh, that, that gives two two thumbs up from Jack Rambies. He's 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 uh he's, again a, a, another Boris Diaw call out there. Um, that that matters, and, and we'll talk about in the, the the other video how he's able to seal guys and be effective as a passer after getting that seal. Um, but as far as the type of lineups and actions that we'll see them use, I, you'll see Larry involved in a ton of screen actions, a ton of DHOs. Uh, I think you're going to see him help facilitate that second unit offense from the middle of the floor a ton. Uh, I'm really interested to see how uh, Ant and him come together and play in the pick and roll and, and what that kind of brings out in them. Uh, this from Jesus Gomez at Piano Master 0 What are the reasons Nance can't play the three? Is it on defense, offense, both? Is there another player that he could switch off with depending on what end of the floor they're on? I always thought, for instance, that might be a way to make a Ben Simmons Rocco pairing work. If you if you had Ben Simmons on the Blazers, you would probably, as it sits right now, you would slide norm down to the two and put Ben on the th- at the three defensively. Offensively, I think you play him more like a five. Um, I wouldn't be thrilled about the floor spacing uh, in that respect, but it'd be okay. Nance, he moves his feet well. He isn't slow by any means, but he's not going to stay in front of dribble drive primary initiators at the three. Uh, he's strong as a, as a bull. There's no doubt. He's 245. Thick dude. Uh, real strong, explosive, straight line guy. No doubt about that. Uh, very heady. Reads things very well. I've seen some people say he's an elite defender. He's not an elite defender. He's a very good defender. Elite defenders are all NBA guys. Um, he does get in passing lanes. He's got a great wingspan. Unreal reach. Um, just short of a plus six guy. So that's the six inch, six inches more wingspan than they have height. Uh, I think that's uh, pretty impactful. Uh, also, I think a little over a nine-foot standing reach at 6'7", that puts him in the center-type categories uh, while being significantly shorter than most centers. Um, so all of these things, they all project to four and five, four and five. And he doesn't really have the tools necessary to be the three either as an initiator with the ball. It, it, he, he's able to take advantage of guys uh, a little bit slower than him, which is at the four and the five. Not so much the guys that are they're more explosive, and he's not uh, so dominant with the ball uh, in, on the post that he's really able to take advantage of guys that may be a little bit smaller than him. He can when he's able to, again, to seal, but if you're asking him to create in that vein, I think that's a bit more of an asset. This is, this is more about optimizing guys. It's not like Larry, uh, you can't have him at the three no matter what. No, no, it, it's not like that. You just, you're not putting him in the best position to succeed. N- neither the same with Robert Covington, which is why putting them at the four and five uh, in a small ball lineup uh, is a bit more effective. This from Mike Miller at Mike 2K Rip City. Do you see Portland picking up a veteran point guard or a third center with a 14th roster spot? Larry Nance Jr. is kind of your third center right now. That's that's how that one's bubbling up. I think they're going to bring some guys in. We should find out here in the next couple weeks. Uh, as far as non-guaranteed spots, I think Quick tweeted that out, something along those lines. It's kind of the same thing that I've heard. Uh, and we'll see where it goes, who really shows up in camp. Um, you, you could get another creator. I, I, I think they would probably take a flyer on a wing type, somebody with some size, uh, just in case. Uh, I haven't heard any names in that regard. But I think Nance Jr. covers the creation aspect. Um, I'm sure it'd be nice if they could find a, a dribble drive t- 
type initiator, point of attack defender type. So maybe a Nilakina or something along those lines. But I think they're going to bring a couple guys into camp and see who sticks. I think that's the the way you look at it right now. Uh, Andre Brobeck at Dre Bob Zero. What would be your ideal small ball lineup? Do you think Nance could be that diamond in the rough that gets us over the hump? I'm going to answer the second part first. No. I think Nance is a very solid player. But as far as getting over the hump, and be, you need another top 25 player. That's, I, I think that's the where I diverge from a lot of fans. I don't think that, well, if you just do this, if you just do this, and if you squint here, and, and if CJ does this, and Nurk does this, it's too many ifs. It's too many ifs. You either are or you aren't. If you have that many ifs, and you have to have that many justifications in place, you really aren't that team. And that's not to say you can't go on some miraculous run, but you don't base projections on miraculous runs you don't base expectations on miraculous runs you look at what you have and the tangible things that you can count on i think if they had more things that they could count on that were positive then i think you could say that you know player x gets them over the hump but does he help yes yes i think he does ideal small ball lineup i'm still figuring this out in my head but the one everybody keeps throwing out is obviously dame cj norm covington nance that's basically you're just swapping nance out for nurk I think you could get a little bit more athletic if, if, if Nas hit or if Snell, um, I, I, I don't want to pull CJ off the floor, but I want to be a little bit more athletic. So the starters minus Nurk add Nance is the, is the, the standard bearer there, but you could talk me into if Nas pops, you could talk me into Dame Norm, Nas Covington. Nance or Dame Ant if Ant all of a sudden figures it out like it's just there there are some permutations I think you can go with there but the standby is swapping out Nurk and Nance and that that allows you to be a little bit more flexible the the thing I would like here is that if Norm is at the two and you've got a bit more size at the three you can be more switchable at between three four and five you can switch everything there hell you could even do it two through five if you're confident that Norm can handle that switch. And I think that gives Portland something they haven't really had in a while. And I think that's that's something to kind of look forward to. All right, Desert Duck at Ryan Rob 2121. If the Blazers end up around the sixth seed around the All-Star break, which you should probably count on, do you think that would be enough to convince Dan to stay, or do you think he believes that only postseason success matters? I'm more akin to believe that the regular season is a regular season. As long as they handle business and they don't get a run out of the gym somewhere, that can be neither here nor there. I think it's more about postseason success. Now, if things go sideways, if guys aren't happy, if all of a sudden Dame's looking around and maybe he's a little bit more sensitive to things that are going on around him, yeah, you could maybe say the regular season matters a little bit more, but I don't think that's the case i'm i'm more apt to believe that dame is just looking at postseason success and i don't i don't want to spend the entire year trying to be like is this enough what about what does dame think what is dame? it's gonna be the narrative but i i don't i don't hope it is i and that's why i'm trying to just look through like the nary nary the larry nance jr eye of the needle right now does it swing anything one way or another i don't think so is it objectively a good move yeah but so take it as that it's a good move uh as far as where they are at the all-star break they could start out poor get hot they could play incredibly well all the way through like there's just so many different things again i think what matters is come april may june I think that's what matters, and that's how you measure it. This also from Desert Duck. Does the acquisition of Nance make Rocco expendable to the org? They have a similar skill set, and if they are attempting to move CJ for another star, CJ and Rocco is a better package than just CJ. I think you're right to an extent there. Um, Covington's on an expiring deal. Nance has one more year at 9.7, I believe. It's a the, the declining contract, so... Um, I don't know if it necessarily makes him more expendable, but it certainly opens the door in the same manner that adding Norman Powell to the roster theoretically made CJ McCullough more expendable. He's still here. So um, it opens the door, certainly. 
Uh, Nance has been a starter plenty of times. Um, I, I could see Nance playing alongside Yusuf Nurkic, certainly. Uh, they're, they're defensively, I think they're a, a lot in the same vein as help defenders, guys who are tears in the passing lanes, uh, long wingspans, more 4-5 than 3-4. They're, they're pretty like for like, Covington being the better shooter, uh, Nance being the bigger, stronger, bulkier guy uh, who can probably take a few more minutes at the at the five uh, and a better playmaker. So it all depends on what you want, but does it make it more expendable? In a vacuum, probably, um, if, if Portland doesn't opt to want to re-sign him. Unsure of what that market, what that cost looks like right now with the way the, the Blazers have money committed to uh, Dame, Norman, CJ. It's going to be interesting. That's going to be sh- for sure. Uh, but... Sure. I think it certainly makes him more or the thought of, of, of adding uh, Covington in a deal certainly looks better or more feasible in that sense. Um, but I don't think they're actively looking to get rid of him by any means. Matthew at Reverend, 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 good Lord, Reverend Romulus, as a 40 something father of three, Nance is going to be my favorite blazer, right? Yes. Unequivocally, he, <laughs> he will uh, ring the bell for, Every uh, basketball dad out there, he is going to clap his hands, talk some junk, chew his teammates out for not giving effort and hustle, uh, sign all of all the graphs, all the autographs, kiss all of the babies, do all of the work off the floor. He's a dirty work all star, and he plays with infectious junkyard energy. So yes, everybody is going to love him. I, I have zero doubts about that. Uh, they loved him in L.A. Uh, they loved him in Cleveland, and he will be beloved, and they'll probably start building the statue after the first couple of weeks in Portland. So I think it's very easy for me to say that I can see him being loved more than Ed Davis, which is insane. So uh, be prepared. You, you, you're cl- you, you know, clutch at your, at, your, at your dad's shirts at your, uh, at your leisure. It'll, it'll be fun. Andre Brobeck at Dre Bob Zero. Is Larry Nance Jr. injury prone? Yes. He is, unfortunately. That is the uh, drawback here. That's it sucks. But typically, when guys get bigger, stronger, heavier, they're injury prone. Um, Larry's just missed some time, and hopefully, it's all behind him. All reports are he is 100 percent healthy right now. Um, the Blazers have worries in the front court. There's no doubt about that. Yusuf Nurkic, Cody Zeller, Larry Nance Jr. Not clean bills of health in their career. That so, um, if you're looking for you know the uh, the hole here, that's that's where it could be. But you're hoping that through sheer luck, will blessings by the basketball gods that you know you don't get a bunch of guys down at the same time, and you can kind of juggle lineups. Portland hopes at PNW Sports five hundred three. What deal do you think Nance would have gotten on the open market this year? Which lineup permutations are you most excited about for next year? Um. Open market, I think he's probably about what he got. I think you're probably looking between the ten to to thirteen million dollars. He he plugs a lot of holes. He does a lot of things, but he doesn't have. He's above average at a lot, and this is why I always talk about like siloed skill sets. But he has one thing: playmaking, creation. That's very valuable, particularly that position. He is he's got that, and that's what keeps his value up. That, and he's a, a solid defender, a solid help defender, weak side guy. So I think he's probably about right. Um, which lineup permutations are most excited about for this next year? As much as I talk about the small ball stuff, I want to see Nance and Nurkic on the floor at the same time. I want to see them in horn sets. I want to see them running hammers. I want to see them in in, in the Stotts fence, uh, early Stotts fence, as far as um, DHO action off pin downs, uh, getting those guys on the move, putting them in the middle of the floor, and letting other guys work off of them. That is what I'm most excited about. Uh, Norm is a natural cutter. Getting Nas and, and Ant involved in that, maybe Dame and CJ who aren't really uh, natural cutters in that vein, maybe they, they do a little bit more with those guys at Chauncey's prodding. I think those are the things that I'm most interested in, in, in seeing as far as lineup permutations go. Here we go. Jeff Workman at JWKS. I'm interested in your thoughts on the rotation next season. Who runs the point in the second unit? I'm assuming it's still CJ, but could we see Dame running the point with the second unit too? You could. I think you're going to see some still some strong staggering from that second unit as far as Dame and CJ. Um, I, 
they tried to get both back on the floor more together in the last couple of years, but I think they're going to go the other way a bit more how it was, particularly with Nance. Uh, they'll have one of Dame CJ, one of Nance Nurk on the floor. So there's always two primary creators on the floor. Guys who uh, got two uh, two guys in Dame and CJ or dribble drive, two natural passer playmakers from the middle of the floor in Nurk and Nance. I think that's how you're going to kind of see. That. And to be honest, Zeller. Zeller's not a bad creator, um, particularly for a center. He's pretty solid. Nance, Nance is the second best creator on this team among the bigs just behind Nurk. Um, and they're probably pretty close to, you know, um, effective. Or, or I should say effectiveness and creativeness. They're, they're both very good in that, in that regard. Um, but I still think it's going to be CJ. I think, I think that's kind of, that's, that's where he's gets elevated that top of that pecking order, uh, shots wise. And that's where he's able to, to be more effective. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Let's see. Does Nance open the door for any other moves that weren't there before? That's from Harry at White Guilt 48. Uh, and this is a follow-up question from Jesus Gomez. Working off of this, does the Nance Jr. Move, Nance Jr. Good Lord. Nance Jr. move make another move more feasible uh, in return for a star? And I think that's kind of calling back to the Covington thing. It certainly allows for Covington to be more expendable, but it's still a like if Nance moves into the starting lineup and the Blazers bring in a star three and Norm moves down to the two, now you still have a gaping hole on the bench. Now it's great that you elevated it, but you'd need to backfill and they don't have a way to do that unless there's another guy in a return. It's it gets convoluted. I don't think Nance really changes that calculus as it sits right now, but you know, the Ben Simmons, Pascal Siakam types, that certainly opens other doors. If, if the guy that's coming in return is more of a 3-4 instead of a 2-3, then I, I think it's a, something you probably take a harder look at. But for the most part, I think that's a safe place for where you can slide in right now. Uh, this is going to be a, like, a little bit of a shorter podcast. Um, that's just how it's going to go because we have the longer uh, drawn out uh, Larry Nance breakdown coming forward. Uh, and because, well, Brandon's not here and this is just me prattling on. So uh, thank you guys very much for your questions this week. Uh, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, make sure like rate review uh, at Jack's Ramsey's on Twitter. Uh, follow there. If you haven't already iTunes, if you please like rate review, leave us a review. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. And uh, we'll be back Thursday with the live show. I do have one guest booked uh, live to come with us from Cleveland. Just need to make sure we are locked in uh, and everything is good to go in that regard. Uh, We will have more interviews with more uh, guests coming up soon. We are locking in dates for everybody right now uh, as, you know, family time, vacation time, back to school. Players are coming back or or out on their last vacations before training camp starts. So uh, we should be able to get these guys in and, and, and get some more content for you guys. Thank you so much. This has been uh, an official month right now, wrapping up the first month of the podcast, and it surpassed every one of my my expectations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Brandon and I are thrilled. Uh, my, my, My people at Blue Wire are thrilled. So, uh, again, thank you guys so, so, so very much for all of the support. Um, I, I do want to make sure that um, I do point this out. I wish I would have done this earlier now that I, I think about it. Maybe I'll put something in at the beginning. And that is uh, with what's going on in Afghanistan. Uh, I'm not here to get political right now. Uh, I think most people can understand where I'm coming from. I spent time out there uh, in my time in the Air Force. And for me, um, it's a humanitarian crisis right now. So if you have the ability, if you have the capacity, if you know um, that you can help out, uh, all of donations, all of the proceeds from the podcast, that's donations, that's subscriptions, that's uh, ad money, that's everything that I get for this next month. Uh, all of September is uh, going to go towards refugeecare.org. Uh, it's a group here in Portland that helps assist with refugees. Uh, and refugees from Afghanistan are in route and will be here by the end of the week. Um, these are people that are being displaced and pushed out of a region in the world. That is one of the most dangerous, vile situations you can imagine, especially for women and children. Um, so again, I, I am going to. If you guys donate, I will take that money and that will be donated. If you want to donate directly, refugeecare.org. Um, 
and again, uh, this was the kind of one of the things that I highlighted when I launched this podcast is that I do want to take the time to reinvest back in the community and help out. And this is, this is something I, I feel very strongly about. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out. Jack Ramsey's at gmail.com. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter at Danny Morang. Uh, and, uh, I'd be more than glad to talk to you guys about it. Uh, and again, thank you all so, so, so very much for all of the support. And again, if you can support here, if you want to support directly, please do, uh, until next time, we'll catch you then. Take care, everybody. Bye.